Okay. So if I have to define, say, what is data? So I have to say that, you know, we can say uh, data can be something, you know, a fact. You can say uh, an individual fact or might be a collection of facts, okay, that are out of context, okay, that can be said. And it has no meaning to it. Or, you know, it is uh, uh, difficult to understand that particular data. Okay, so we call a fact as a data if we are not able to get the meaning of that particular uh, fact. Okay, and uh, so in some terms, you'll find instead of using the word data, they make use of this uh, word raw data. Okay, which mean, uh, again means that, you know, it does not have any meaning to it. And uh, remember this word data is a plural word. Okay, it is uh, like, you know, multiple, when I say facts, okay. Uh, here it is a plural word and similarly data is a plural word if you have to look at the uh, singular of data it is datum d-a-t-u-m datum is a singular word which is your equivalent to your fact okay and uh, you'll find that you know for example if uh, i've collected date of birth okay of a person Okay, so only date of birth is not uh, going to give me any, uh, it won't be very meaningful for me. Okay, until and unless I collect some other data as well of that particular in, uh, person. So like his name, the city and all this. So this uh, can be, you know, combined together. You know? So you can collect multiple uh, data or raw data as uh, it is said. And together, I, if I come up with some something meaningful, then it becomes information, okay? So we can say that information is a set of data in context with relevance, you know, to, uh, you know, one or more people or even an event, huh? it can be an event as well. So information can be uh, said to be a set of data in context with relevance to one or more people at a point in time, or you can say for a period of time. Sometimes what happens is, you know, uh, data which is information for me might not be information for someone else because it is not relevant. Okay, so this term data and information, you know, usually goes hand in hand. So, so, so for some people, it might be information. So for someone, it might be just raw data. Okay, because it is not relevant for them. You know, again, time is also a very important factor. If it is, uh, you know, if it is within a given time, like for example, if I have the current information of uh, the stock market, okay, uh, or any data which is uh, related to a particular company, which is going to help me decide something, you know, which can become uh, information for me, okay. But the same thing if, uh, you know, is, uh, you can say after say 100 years or something, you know, it might not be that important. So for them, for some of them, it might not be information. Okay, so again, uh, time also matters. Uh, the time frame also matters when we say a data is information. But basically, you will find that you know anything which is relevant, which is converted into uh, some uh, you know insight, can be said to be a information also. Okay, as I said, um, a date of birth. Okay, a date of birth again. If it's just an individual birth, a date of birth, it is not going to make any sense. But if I have some other, uh, you know, uh, information or data that uh, will give me an information of that particular person. And that when I analyze further, you know, if I analyze the information and link uh, the information with a different, uh, you know, scenarios or data or might be events, you know, then it can become a knowledge for me. Okay. A knowledge about the person. Okay. Now, knowledge can be, you know, in two types. You usually you'll find that, you know, you have implicit knowledge and explicit knowledge. This is, we are going a bit deeper into this. So if I have to define knowledge, knowledge is something, you know, cognizance or cognit, uh, cognition, you can say. The fact, or you can say a condition of knowing something with, uh, you know, with uh, familiarity, you know, which is, you know, you can say, either gain through experience or through association, right? And uh, it includes something which is gained from either, uh, you can say experience, study, uh, association, awareness, you know, or you can say comprehension, 
fine and as i said it is uh, it can be either implicit or explicit okay so you will find that knowledge uh, can be of this two type that is uh, implicit or it can be explicit explicit in the sense you can say the formal knowledge when we talk about implicit knowledge it is something which is known to the person in the person's uh, a person who retains it in his mind okay that information or that uh, is uh, a knowledge for him which cannot be easily transferred uh, uh, you can say uh, might be to the other person or to other media is implicit knowledge whereas uh, the explicit knowledge uh, also known as uh, i said uh, the formal knowledge is knowledge that has been you know codified you can say or you know stored in various uh, media such as your books magazines or you know even presentation tapes and so on on the websites okay and uh, this can be used and you know held uh, for further improvement of the uh, mankind okay so uh, explicit knowledge you will find that it can be accessible okay and the process of moving uh, the knowledge from say implicit to ex uh, explicit is through in the form of books and that's why you find that lots of you know authors the authors who have their unique ideas and all okay they represent the implicit knowledge is converted into explicit in form of books and magazines and you know tapes or even on uh, blogs websites and so on nowadays even uh, you know videos are created youtube right okay? then uh, we have a concept called organizational knowledge okay it is uh, more related to business related so if i say uh, organizational knowledge is uh, information that is you know uh, significant uh, significant to a particular organization okay so uh, it is uh, a co combination of experience and understanding and is retained by the organization okay and uh, its uh, information is uh, in context with respect to you know understanding what is the relevant and significant uh, to the business issues or the business topics so what is a meaningful uh, what, what is meaningful in the business okay or to the business uh, can be said to be a organizational knowledge okay it it's a, uh, you can say analysis uh, and uh, you know reflection and uh, synthesization of uh, the information okay uh, especially which is uh, you know uh, very much meaningful uh, to the business of that particular organization we can call it as the organizational knowledge okay there are many more things into uh, what is uh, you know data you'll find multiple definitions of data but uh, to keep it very simple please remember data is uh, something which is singular uh, information uh, not information i said uh, fact you can see and uh, a data which is collected okay and which can make some sense will become information or which is processed you can say usually in it term what we say is raw data when it is processed it goes through some processing it gives me some information so the outcome is considered to be an information okay so if you want to know in terms of the it term then raw data which is processed will be termed as information for me okay and information which is further you know uh, you can say all the information which is collected and analyzed okay and it uh, gives you some particular uh, facts uh, uh, about a person or uh, about an event will become a knowledge okay and thus we can say you know usually knowledge influences the thinking and uh, you know the uh, you can say the action of a person okay like uh, machines can also make decisions you know based on uh, the new knowledge which is generated by information and in order to gain knowledge it is uh, you know necessary to process this information further okay so a data once processed will give me information information multiple information which is put together and further processed and uh, you can see can generate knowledge for us okay that is uh, how it moves around any doubts you have or any clarity you want me to you know uh, give you in terms of any of this three terms so data or you can call it as raw data because always you'll find you know this word data and information is getting interchanged and it is used okay fine so it it happens that uh, you make use of the wrong words in some many cases instead of data you should have said information and instead of information data so you'll find that you know in many cases these two words will be used interchangeably okay 
but of course knowledge is something which uh, you can say is uh, gained through information after processing lots of information and it's getting knowledge or generating knowledge is not easy any questions uh, to, uh, so far okay if uh, no question then let us look at uh, the various uh, stages of an uh, you can say of an organization or a company in uh, terms of data maturity how does a data mature okay so first of all what is uh, data maturity okay now uh, if i have to answer that uh, data maturity is uh, uh, the extent to uh, you know to which an organization or a company uh, utilizes that particular data uh, they produce okay so the utilization of the data which is produced by them uh, can be termed as data maturity a, a term data maturity can be used and the more they are able to you know use that data or process that data okay the higher up they are in uh, in this in the scale of data maturity okay so the more the data is processed the more uh, they are able to you know use that data to come up with some information and through that some knowledge okay or insights you can say so that they can make some decision you can see the organization is getting mature in terms of data maturity okay and this can happen only in case of if they are making use of you know advanced uh, business intelligence and analytical softwares okay to analyze that data and uh, can uh, you know uh, can, they can use that particular analyzed data for their uh, you know further decision making and you will find that you know an organization which is uh, not uh, using uh, uh, bi or you can say the anal uh, analytic softwares and uh, you know relying more on the spreadsheets like uh, your excel and so on to just produce their reporting just doing their reporting and all you will see that or you can say that uh, those organizations are not data mature okay so the term data maturity will be used for organizations especially those who are making use of the advanced features advanced software analytical software and the business uh, intelligence tools okay to analyze their data and uh, you know produce some insights from them okay that uh, can be further used for you know making decision okay and uh, actually uh, data maturity is a journey as you know a journey from uh, on a scale and there are different steps which are involved in data maturity so if i have to look at the different steps you know basically there are five stages or steps uh, of uh, uh, your business data maturity okay the first uh, step uh, step or stage is known as the operational stage okay and uh, in this uh, stage you can see reporting is uh, limited to the uh, the tasks and uh, the task which or the information which is uh, critical for the business operation okay and it is within uh, uh, or with no formal uh, introduction to your bi or analytics tool or standards so you can see in place okay so uh, hardly bi and analytical tools are used at this particular stage the spreadsheets are uh, primarily used for reporting at the operational stage here the second uh, stage which uh, uh, is a part of uh, your business data maturity is descriptive okay descriptive is where you know your bi and analytics are in their early stages you can say it has just been implemented okay early stage of implementation and uh, they are mainly used for reporting purpose okay so reporting of or creating reports of the various activities or the events which have occurred okay so it is more of descriptive type okay this is the second stage uh, of your data maturity the third stage which comes is planning where you know we are using uh, the tools like uh, scenario planning and your business intelligence and your analytics are used to just you know uh not just to report uh, or create reports uh, on what's happening but uh, it is used for future plans so creating plan okay for the future is what uh, is used at this particular stage so you can say a bit of more analytical tools are used okay and uh, bi tools are used in this uh, stage and using uh, the outcomes of the data uh, the organization is planning for the future okay that is the third stage of your data maturity 
then uh, comes your fourth stage. The fourth stage is uh, predictive, okay, where you can say data analytics is uh, 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 used to predict what will happen in uh, you know future. Might be in five years or you know ten years or so, or even uh, you know twenty years, and uh, uh, from the current date. And it can help uh, you know pinpoint the key drivers uh, of the trends which is going to come up in future. So in a way, we can say we are predicting something, what is going to happen in future. That is the fourth stage of data maturity. And uh, the final and the last stage uh, is your prescriptive uh, stage, stage number five. And it talks about uh, users which have no longer to have input variables okay, into the system to you know, predict the future outcome. Instead, uh, they are making use of machine learning and uh, they're using artificial intelligence, okay? And uh, uh, through, uh, you can say machine learning and artificial intelligence, uh, it is uh, you know possible to detect issues or errors or problems in the pr particular process before they are even you know, considered uh, uh, to be implemented. So this is the final stage, uh, you can say, uh, of your data maturity. And organizations who are at the final stage, that is who are implementing uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence can be said to be, you know, more mature or highly mature organization in terms of data maturity. Okay, so basically, uh, you know, I hope you have understood uh, the different flow or the different, uh, you can steps through which an organization will go, you know, and achieve uh, data maturity over a period of time. Okay, and coming to the final stage, that is stage number five, is not that easy. It uh, do take time. Okay, lots of investment in technology and skilled, uh, you can say, professionals are required at various stages so that they can come to this final stage. Clear? I hope I have, uh, you know, explained you the concept of data maturity and the different, uh, you can say, uh, stages of uh, data maturity. Any doubts still now? Okay. Uh, so let us uh, go ahead and uh, I will uh, share the screen now. Uh, and I'll show you how to download uh, this uh, software, our software. We are not going to immediately start with coding or something like that. What we'll do is uh, we will uh, download the software. There are two softwares which uh, I want you all to download. Right now, uh, just let me share the screen first. Okay, uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah. yeah. And let's go to the browser. Okay, so when you want to uh, download the software, the first thing, uh, it is Google. Uh, I'll say download are for Windows, okay, because uh, I think everyone might be using Windows only. If uh, you have some other operating system uh, on your desktop or your PCs, or even your laptops, you can uh, go for that particular software or that operating system. Okay, the first website itself, okay, this is uh, the official website for your R programming projects and all. You can click on this, and as you can see, the latest version is uh, 4.1.0, so I can click on this. Okay, so this is my window which is getting displayed. Okay, and uh, the first option here on top, you can download this. If you want to know more about uh, how to install uh, and the other instructions also, you can install this as well. So you can download on this installation and other instructions. You can click on this and you'll get all the information. So this is the information which is provided to you so that you can have uh, you can easily install the software, okay? So if you want to read this, uh, you can, but I don't think so it is required much, okay? What you do is, first of all, you just click on this download here, okay? So click on this, it'll ask you to download this down, okay? Now, because I already have it uh, downloaded, so R, you can see this 4.1 win and in round brackets, I'm getting one here. So I have already downloaded this, okay? So I don't waste time there. 
the second software which uh, you should download uh, is uh, the R Studio. Okay, so you can see R Studio here. Okay, for Windows again. Okay, and uh, the official website is rstudio.com. So you can come here. But see that uh, you first install R, uh, uh, the R software, and then you can go and uh, download this R Studio. Your R Studio is nothing but uh, your, you can say a platform uh, where you can uh, you know uh, write your codes as well as you can see the outcomes. Okay, like in Java we have uh, you know uh, when we install Java, Java can be you know the coding or the programs can be easily written in Notepad. Okay, and uh, we can just execute that uh, code or compile that code uh, from the command prompt. Now, when I say command prompt, I want to, uh, if you want uh, those who are not from the IT background, if I am saying command prompt, that means when I come here, I'm typing a command prompt. You can see this is my command prompt. That is your DOS window. And this is the window which we get. Okay, so it is like, you know, you type something here. Let us say type some command here, DIR for directory. And I get the list of uh, directory. So, uh, this is the command prompt uh, coding, you can say. So you can write codes, you can execute commands on the command prompt as well. Okay, if I say exit, I come out. Fine, so, you know, that is one. And uh, when we do advanced uh, programming, uh, especially in R, we are going to make use of R Studio. Okay, R Studio gives you a better interface where you can write the code uh, on one uh, side and I can also see the outcome the output of that after compiling it. Compiling also is easy in case of R Studio. Okay. And it supports all the packages which are there in, uh, which is required for R programming. So once you download, uh, I'll close this uh, browser. Okay. And uh, you have to just double click on the file and just accept whatever it is. Uh, if uh, the custom, uh, the custom uh, setup will happen. But uh, if you want to install on some other drive, by default, it is going to install in C drive under the program, uh, uh, you can say program files. If you want to install on some other drive, as last time I told you all to, you know, uh, keep it on the other drive. So those who are intending to install it on some other drive can select the drive and select the path where they want to install it. Okay. Now, after installing it, you can execute that. So when I say R, you know, as soon as I type R here, you can see this app is coming and this is the icon. Okay, so you can open this, yeah, just click on this. And this is my interface, the R interface. And based on the type of machine, whether it is a 62-bit machine or 32-bit machine, the, uh, the application will get installed. So you need not be worried whether I should download the 32-bit version or the 62-bit version, okay? Uh, just download this uh, 4.1.0 and you have to just execute this. Okay, so this is how you, it looks like. Fine, so and this is my console, like this is my prompt, you can say, the R prompt. Okay, like we have got the command prompt, on the command prompt we had got the C drive and so on. Okay, so there's a difference. Now this is, this is representing your DOS operating system. Okay. Okay, so this is the way I can give the commands here. Okay, and for R programming, this is my uh, console or the prompt, which is given by greater than sign. Any doubts here? If you have any questions regard, uh, regarding downloading, downloading and installing is not an issue. Okay, the, the only thing you look at is uh, whether uh, your machines, their operating system, depending on the operating system, you have to download the right uh, application. That's the only concern. The rest of the steps are very easy. Okay, so please give a try today itself, you know, try to download and install this software. I'll show you some uh, small thing like, for example, here only, you know, they have given this help and, you know, type Q into round bracket to quit from R and so on. Okay, so if I want to know help uh, and I can give help, I won't do that right now. I'll show you the license. So L-I-C-E-N-S-E -E, license round bracket press enter and you get this information. Okay, now when I press enter, what happens? This is a function. Okay, because the round brackets are given here. This is a function. Function means it's something uh, is, is multiple commands are written inside that particular code. A group of, you can say, uh, statements uh, makes a function. Okay, 
So in this function, when I execute this function, it gives you the detail about the software license. Okay, okay there is a very simple, let us uh, print something and say, uh, welcome to our programming. So what I'll do, I'll write print. Okay, that is a, it's again a function. I'll put the round bracket and inside the round bracket in double quotes, I'll just give hello, welcome to our programming. Round bracket complete press enter and this is my output. Okay, it is that simple. I mean, uh, one more thing uh, about R programming, uh, whatever code you write, uh, it compiles, uh, it, uh, it, is, it is using an interpreter and not a compiler. Uh, interpreter means uh, it, uh, you know, it uh, uh, checks for the code uh, one at a time. That means if uh, on line number one, if there is an error, okay, it is going to, it is not going to go further and uh, you know, check for errors for the other code as well. Suppose you have 10 lines of code. So it is going to, as soon as an uh, error is encountered, it is going to stop, then it will display the error for you. Okay, a compiler usually what does, uh, what it does it, it, uh, you know, it uh, checks for the errors, the syntax error, or they won't, uh, of course, logical errors are, cannot be checked. The syntax errors are checked. And uh, it will, uh, you know, compile the whole code all the 10 lines and it will show you all the errors which is occurring. Okay, that is not uh, in case of R. Uh, it, as soon as you get an error, it is going to stop. Okay, that is how it works. And on the command prompt, uh, whenever I give a command, it will be a single execution of a command here. Okay, so like a print is a function here, which helps me display uh, some string or some content uh, on the screen. And the output is displayed with this. You can see this square bracket one. This indicates the output, the first output for this particular command, which got executed. So as soon as you press enter, it gets, uh, you know, uh, executed for you. And, uh, you know, uh, even the errors are compiled. So if I make an error, let us say I make an error here. Okay, I give double quotes here. Hello. And I forget uh, to put the double quotes back and I just complete the round bracket. Okay and I press enter, okay. So it's still waiting. You can see this plus sign, it is still waiting for me to do something, okay. And until unless I do something here, let us say I put round bracket, do something less, okay. And it is giving me something. And so this is the new line characters. Slash N indicates a new line, okay. So until unless you complete the whole, uh, you can say syntax of that particular command, uh, it is uh, not going to uh, uh, give you the output. Okay, the dot is coming. Let me move this. Fine, that is uh, one thing. Uh, let us uh, do one more small code. What I'll do is I'll uh, uh, create a variable for you. Let us see how to create a variable. Now, creating a variable is very easy in case of our programming. Uh, we are not supposed to mention any data type. Uh, whatever content I'm going to store in the variable, will decide the data type of that particular variable. First of all, uh, uh, those who have heard this word for the first time, variable. Variable, you can say, is uh, similar to a container. You know, a container, usually, if suppose you have a box with you, you can put some content in it, right, and close it. Whereas, similarly, you have a variable where I can store some data. Now that data will be stored in that particular variable. And whenever I want to access that data, I have to use that variable name. Okay, for just for an example, if I say I want to create a variable by the name my string. Okay, so this is my uh, variable and I want to assign uh, some content to it. I want to store something here. So to assign something, uh, I have to make use of the less than sign and the minus sign. Okay, you are not going to make use of the equal to sign as of now. The equal to sign, there are different purposes of the equal to sign. We'll see that later on. But whenever I want to store some content into a variable, I have to make use of this operator, which is a less than and a minus sign. Okay, it's like an arrow, you can say. Okay, so it's indicating that whatever I'm going to type here. So let us say, hello. How are you? Okay, I complete this. So what is going to happen is this string, this is a string, 
Okay, why it is a string? Because I have enclosed this in double quotes. Okay, this whole thing will be stored in this particular variable. I press enter. Okay, now it is stored. Now let us see if I can print this content. So I can say print into round bracket my string. Okay, round brackets complete. Now, if you look at this uh, print function, which I have given, remember in the previous print function, I had given double quotes and this content was displayed. Okay, right now my content is stored in this variable. So the variables are not going to come in double quotes. Okay, so you do not put double quotes for your variables. Okay, you put double quotes only for the string. Now, because this is a variable, what is going to happen is whatever content is there okay the content which i have stored in the previous line here hello how are you okay this is what i have stored in this particular variable that variable should get uh, displayed here so when i press enter i get this output as hello how are you okay now i can also put uh, say uh, a value say my value e uh, is assigned with say some numbers say 45 Okay, and I want to print this. So print my value. Okay, I get 45. Now in this case, there are no double quotes. Okay, and if there are no double quotes and it's a, a, a numeric value, okay, the data type will be integer. Of course, based on whether I have put a, a decimal point or not. So we have a numeric value which is getting stored here and double quotes are not there in this case. Okay. Can I put double quotes for 45, anyone? Can I write my value again like this, double quotes 45? Is it possible? Yes. I put a space between so that it becomes more clear. Especially those who have done programming before can answer this question. Is it possible to write my value and assign 45 and put 45 in double quotes. Yes, sir. And if it is possible, whether 45 will be considered as a numeric value or a string value? As a string value. String. As a string value, right. So remember one thing, a number can also be enclosed in double quotes, but while considering, it will be considered as a string and not as a numeric value. Okay, so this is possible. And I can just print this, print my value, press enter. And now you can see the double quotes have come here and it is treating this value as a string and not as a, you can say numeric value. Okay. Now you can also uh, have a, different, uh, actually there are different uh, types which are available, especially in R and we are going to deal with all of them. Okay. And they are also known as R objects. Okay. So there are many uh, different types, like we have vectors, we have list and we have uh, matrices, we have arrays. Okay. We have factors and we have data frames. So these are some of the, you can say the R objects, the different types of uh, data objects, you can say, or data types as well which can be used, okay? And each of them will have the basic data type, like the numeric data type or the character where we have it enclosed in double quotes or also known as a string data type, okay? Then we also have a, a logical data type. What is logical? Logical values will be either true or false, okay? Values which has only two forms, either true or it will be false. These are the values of logical data type, okay? Then you'll find that uh, any number, you know, if I write like this, my value, okay, and assign, uh, say 45.63, okay, even this is a numeric value, okay, a number which is having a decimal point with it will be known as a numeric value, a number without, uh, you can say without a decimal point, will be known as an integer value. That is the difference. In other programming languages, there is a word which is used as float value. Okay, so a number with a decimal points will be known as a float value. 
or even in C programming or in Java, it is also known as double value. Okay, based uh, it uh, totally depends on the number of bytes which is occupied or taken to store the number. Okay, in R programming, we'll call this as a numeric value, and a number which is without decimal points will be treated as a integer value. Okay, that is the difference. So if I have to display this now, or let us say I want to store integer value, only integer, I want to specify this. I want to specify or make it very explicit that I'm going to store only integer. So I have to write it like this, 45L. Okay, so when I press enter, there's no error. And when I print this, print my value. Okay, I get 45. Now, where is this L gone? This L is just an indication that I'm storing an integer value. Okay, that is the indication of what type I'm storing. Okay, if I write only 45, then it will be numeric value. Understood the difference between uh, when we put L, what is the type? And when we ignore L, what is the type? I hope you have understood this. It's very simple. If I write simple 45, it will be treated as numeric. If I write 45 L, it will be treated as integer. Okay, is this clear? Fine. Yes, sir. Now there's a very interesting type as well. There's one very interesting type, which is a complex type, a complex data type. Now your complex data type usually has, uh, you can say, uh, an initiation like this, you know, we have, uh, I'll explain you what the numbers are, but it can be written like this. Let us say, write V here and assign this value. Say I give two plus five I. Okay, two plus five I. Now this becomes a complex data type. Why it is complex? Because here I have a numeric type and this is my other type. So wherever I have this uh, I written, okay, I'll uh, explain you this two different terms. And when I display this, so if I want to display V, okay, I get this like this. Okay, even though it is not enclosed